Hello, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to be teaching you a little bit more about Git's rebase interactive functionality and how it can help you on a day to day at work, whether you're working for a large team or whether you're working alone on a public repository that you want to sort of make available for other people to see. Before we start, I'd like to kindly ask you to please visit my website and check out the posts that I've got there. I've got many, many software uh, engineering related posts. You might find one or two of them useful for your, your coding work. And also please subscribe to my channel. I feel like most of the people watching aren't subscribed. Uh, that would help me out quite a lot, especially with the motivation to, <laughs> to keep uploading videos. But let's get into it. As usual, I've got here a Linux terminal open and I've also created a dummy, a repository to make some changes to so you can see the usefulness of some of the stuff I'm going to be teaching you here. And in this repository, I've got a few things here, only a couple of things really. I've got a readme.md file to keep the uh, Git repository description and then some code.py to sort of store some Python code if you're using this in a real world scenario. And just for the purposes of this tutorial, let's cut out the readme so you can see what the first thing we're going to do here. And you can see that we've got a hello world title here, which is not quite a title yet, because if you know anything about Markdown, you probably know that we should have a space here between the hash and the hello world. So it actually displays as a title. And you can see this in the uh, Git repositories. It doesn't actually display properly. Let's get to our first um, tip here of the video. So say you actually want to fix this. Maybe you've got a few changes already and then you realize that you've not pushed something properly in a commit that should have been, that should have included all of the changes. So um, naturally, you know, you could, you could open the file. So the readme file and apply the changes that you need. So let me just add a space here. And you could naturally also, you know, commit, you know, fix spacing. Of course, you add your file first. I just forgot to do that. There you go. And then you commit it. And then if you look at your log, you know, the changes are there. So you can see it here. Your fixed spacing is there. So the first useful trick that Git Rebase Interactive allows you to do is to actually fix up a commit. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, you know, if you look at the log here, oops, wrong command. If you look at the log, uh, you've got the fixed spacing for the readme.md commit here. And that's sort of separate to the first commit where I've actually introduced uh, the readme.md, which is this commit here. And you can see that by doing name only. You can see that, you know, that changes the readme file and that also changes the readme file there. And what you can do with Git Rebase Interactive is essentially merge this commit into this one and sort of keep your history nice and clean in a linear fashion. Let's get into it. So what you're going to type here for this particular case is this. Oh, that was too quick. Let me do it again. So it's git rebase dash I head and then tilde free. And what that does is it invokes the git rebase interactive functionality and it, it tells git that you want to consider the latest free commits of your branch. Okay. And what that will do once you type enter is it will show you a bunch of options here. So this is kind of alien to, to people if you've never seen this before. And essentially what you've got here is a your, your history, your recent history and your three most recent commits here. And the way it works is it shows you the most recent commits at the very bottom. And then the next one up is the one before that and so on. So it's the most recent at the bottom and, and the least recent at the very top. Okay. And what I like about Git is that it also shows you all of the options that you've got available for you to use in, in the Git rebase interactive command. So as you can see here, you know, all the commands available to me in my Git repository are pick, which essentially leaves the um, commit as it is. It doesn't change anything. Uh, you can reword, you can, you can sort of edit the uh, commit message with this. Uh, edit as well, which allows you to actually edit the commit. And there are, you know, you can amend it, you can edit the, uh, the, the message with this kind of the same as this and a few other options. I'm not going to get into this too much today. You can look it up online. You can squash a commit, which merges one commit to the next one up. So if I do a squash on this one here, for example, it will simply take this commit here and merge it with this one here at the top. Okay. Which you can see, we're getting closer to what we actually want. There's exec to run a command, break, a drop to actually delete a, co a commit. If you don't want it anymore, I could drop this commit as well and so on. You can read about all these options online. I'm only going to be showing you a couple of them today. Okay. So the first thing we want to do here in, is in this particular case is to actually move my fix spacing commit to the next line up. And do be very careful with this. Make sure that you're not reordering your changes in the same files in particular that that could, you know, mess up your, your code. If you've got commits for different files, for example, you know, this adding Python code, I didn't change anything in the readme at all. So it, sh it shouldn't include any changes to the readme. And we saw that earlier in my Git log. So all I did here is uh, moved the fixed spacing up one. So it's essentially as if I committed that 
uh, straight after my first commit, which also changes the readme file. So it applies the first commit first and then the fixed spacing after. Okay. And what we can also do here is we could squash it and, you know, save this file and close it. And then Git will ask you to essentially change the commit message for, for the commit that would be replacing these two here. That's perfectly fine. If you've got multiple commits and you've got, you know, multiple changes that you've merged, you, you, will, you want to make sure that you communicate the correct changes in the commit message. But in this particular case, it's even easier than that. We can use the fix up option, the F option here instead of pick. And I could also write fix up here. It would work in the same way or F for sure. And what this will do is it will essentially merge the fixed spacing commit into first commit. And then it will also discard this message here, the fixed spacing. So it will not merge the message in. So you, you have exactly the same message as the first commit here, which is just first commit. Let's save that and see what happens. So we saved it. And if we look at our Git log again, you can see that, you know, adding Python code is the most recent one and then first commit there. So it essentially discarded my, my fixed spacing message and merged that into this commit here. And I know it's merged because I can actually check my readme file and you can see that the spacing is there. Now, the only downside to uh, Rebase Interactive is that you have rewritten the uh, the history of your, your Git changes. So what essentially that means is that you've changed the uh, the hashes of your changes here, okay? And because of that, you've changed the uh, structure of the Git repository, meaning that you will have to force push this. And this is another good point that I should probably bring up. You shouldn't really use Git Rebase Interactive if, if you're working on a branch such as master or development where multiple people are working at once because you might, you know, screw up other people's work because you have to force push it. But if you're working on your sort of small feature branch, this should be just fine. Uh, still, if you're working on a small branch that other people are working with you, what I would recommend is to, instead of just force pushing it, so git push force, what you're going to do is git push force with lease. And this option here, force release, will make sure that if anyone pushed any changes before you, those changes will not be overridden by uh, your force push. It will, Git will tell you that, hey, that there's some changes in the repository that you haven't pulled yet, so you should probably do that before you push it. So just give you a warning before any anything wrong happens, okay? So if I just do that in, the, in my, my particular case here, you can see that if I go to my Git repository, that has actually been displayed as a title now. And if I look at my changes, my commits here, you can see that I've only got, you know, the uh, the first three commits that I've had. The empty commit at the start just to push the, the branch name. First commit, which if I click on it, it should include the correct changes now. So it merged my fix up uh, change and my Python change as well. Okay. And that's pretty much it for this video. And I hope you enjoy this. I hope you use Git Rebase Interactive is actually a very powerful tool, especially if you want to keep your history quite clean and, you know, get rid of those fix up commits with only like one line change uh, when they don't really matter too much. You know, they should have been added in the first place in, in different commits. Maybe in the next videos, I'm going to show you uh, some other options of Git Rebase Interactive that are quite useful as well, such as, you know, the drop commit uh, functionality, as well as the uh, the edit the commit message and that's it i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial uh, once again just visit my website and if you've got any questions or feedback or suggestions please feel free to comment below and i'll get to you as soon as possible bye bye